Thank you for taking a few minutes to learn how the online streaming ministry works here at the Lewisbury United Methodist Church. This video has been put together to enable you to power up our equipment and establish a live stream for our Sunday morning service to share with our faith community. We won't go into too much depth and there are areas you can take out based on your comfort level with the technology. The startup process should take less than 10 minutes. If when powering on the computer you get any update messages, it is best to delay those unless you have a longer period of time to ensure they are completed ahead of the service. On Sundays I am unable to attend the service, I will try to set up as much as possible ahead of time in order to eliminate as many variables as possible. Let me start with a quick overview of our current system. We have a great in-house sanctuary soundboard that handles most of the audio input feeds for the service which we are able to tap into on the streaming side and we don't have to make changes to those levels. In addition, we have a front of house streaming only audio input system. We use this generally to pick up the piano and organ as in the sanctuary these instruments do not require amplification through the sanctuary PA system. We also have a microphone in the balcony to help pick up congressional response and singing. In the balcony, we have a streaming soundboard that then combines these three audio inputs so we can make adjustments during the stream for their volume levels with respect to one another. But don't worry, you can generally leave both the house mix and the piano and organ mix levels set and you only need to adjust for the congregation microphone levels a few times during the service. For our picture feed, we have two cameras that can be easily switched as well as the slideshow feed. If you only wish to use one camera, that's fine as well. And our final system is the computer, which takes these inputs and generates a single output stream. We use Streamlabs OBS software for compiling in the live stream on our YouTube channel. With that out of the way, let's get things set up. First, I remove the cover and power up the mixer at the front of the sanctuary. There's a single power switch on the side of the sound card to be turned on. You'll see the mixer light up and the level should already be set. They'll look like this. This signal is sent wirelessly to the balcony. Now we can move up to the balcony and plug in the extension cord into the battery backup box. This box will prevent the system from resetting in case of a power outage, though the internet connection might fail in such an event for a few moments after the power is restored. This cord will power up the sound board in the balcony. While the computer is already plugged into the battery backup, under the table, just press the computer power button. The password for the church user account should have already been provided for you. Once the computer is powered up, you can open the Chrome browser and log into our YouTube account. You will also want to open the Streamlabs OBS software. Both these icons are on the dashboard screen. In the YouTube screen, you'll want to click the Create Video button in the upper right. It looks like a camera with a plus sign. Then click Go Live. Don't worry, you're not live yet. The stream will be built on this screen and you just need to click the Edit for now. Change the date for the service and click Save. The stream will automatically start from the Streamlabs OBS software when you are ready to begin. In the Streamlabs OBS software program, you just need to make sure the video feeds are set. In the lower center, there are three items projector, camera, and soundboard. Think of the projector and camera as visual layers. There is a little icon on the right that looks like an eye. If the eye is not crossed out, then that layer is turned on. We have it set up in such a way that only the topmost layer that is turned on is visible to the stream. So if both these layers are on, only the projector feed will be visible. We use this to easily switch between the cameras and projector. By simply clicking on the eye icon for projector, we'll turn it off and the camera feed is the highest visual level that's turned on and therefore what will be seen on the stream. Of course, always leave the soundboard on so that the audio for the stream will be heard. We start service with the projector turned on with our welcome message. We turn it off at the beginning of the service but we will turn it back on for any slides of importance during announcements, sometimes during the message, and of course we'll turn it on during the song lyrics. Don't worry about changing the slides though, the sound technician will handle that, unless of course you're handling both jobs. 
this is an area that if you find it too complex, you could just leave the projector off and just have the cameras play, but it would be best to include the projector at the appropriate times. We have two welcome instrumentals before service. In order to not have the video take too long for folks watching after the fact, I begin the stream after the first instrumental has finished. Go ahead and click the Go Live green button in the bottom right corner of Streamlabs OBS, and everything will begin. There is a 20 second delay in what we, you will see in the actual stream on YouTube. You'll see this if both screens are up at the same time. On the right side of Streamlabs OBS, there is a volume meter for the soundboard. Ideally, you want the peaks to be in the upper greens or lo low yellows. Use this volume meter to gauge the overall and individual levels. I have the soundboard labeled People, House, and Stage. The people level is for the microphone that picks up the congregation. The house is for the sanctuary PA system. The stage will pick up the microphone for the organ and uh, the piano at the front. You only need to adjust the bottom knobs for general use, and most times you only need to worry about the one labeled people. The house and stage settings can be left as seen here generally for the entire service. It's rare they need adjustment. The people knob will range from all the way counterclockwise for off to around halfway during singing or responses. If the people is left up for the whole service, it will cause an echo sounding for the recording. You will want to use the headphones to hear the mix if you're comfortable with providing this element to our online listeners. But generally, you don't need to use the headphones for the entire service if you don't want. Just watch the volume meter on the Streamlabs OBS. If you're not comfortable with making the adjustments for people, you can leave the people off to simplify things. For the cameras, I have two cameras set up. The lens covers are the little switch on the right hand side of each camera, and the power button is the upper square on the left side. You do not need to record with these, just make sure they are turned on. Each camera will need to have the zoom set, which is done with the toggle button on top of the camera. I typically use camera one zoomed in to the front of the sanctuary and use it for wide shots and often for special music with a group. I zoom camera two into the podium for the speaker or performer. The tripod for camera two is looser and easier to move smoothly. However, I do try to make all camera movements while the other camera is the active image to avoid choppy panning. Our cameras do a nice job, but they aren't set up for smooth panning. Switching between active cameras couldn't be easier. The black magic box has each camera plugged into it, and whichever button you select will light up with a bright red light, and that will be the active camera in the stream. At some point, I would like to have the projector go through this box as well, but at the moment, that feed doesn't work as it should, hence we use the layer tool built into the software. That's pretty much it for production. At the end of the service, just click the red End Stream button on the Streamlabs OBS. I wait for the 20 second delay and then click the End Stream on YouTube, though that will happen on its own if you forget. Once everything is done, I close out and power down the computer. Then I unplug the extension cord we plugged in for the balcony soundboard and go down to the front of the church and turn off that soundboard with the little switch and put the dust cover back on. Too easy, right? Thanks so much for your help. Feel free to watch this video as many times or reach out to me and I'll be happy to assist. Have a wonderful day.